Earlier, I spoke to Dr. David Nabarro from the World Health Organization, and I asked him uh, whether the low cost of the Oxford vaccine would help to make it more accessible in less developed parts of the world. I think this low cost is really important. I have been worried, John, as I've seen news of the new vaccines coming out over the last three weeks, that we were going to see rich nations rushing and getting vaccine for their populations and then poor nations sort of being left behind. And, and that's the really worrying thing about this particular pandemic, because it's stopped travel between different parts of the world. Uh, it's reducing trade. It reduces educational visits. It also has a huge impact just on how we all get on together and work together, even, even between neighboring countries. So my hope is that with this vaccine, we have some chance of, in inverted commas, getting the world working again. A very key aspect of this breakthrough is the fact that AstraZeneca have refused to take any profit out of it. Is the WHO going to try to persuade all the other companies to fall into line and do the same thing? There's lots of work underway from the member states, the countries that run the WHO, trying to do three things. One, to make sure that the cost is as low as possible. Two, to make sure that intellectual property on any discoveries uh, is shared in an equitable way rather than held by the country or organisation that produces stuff. And three, to really prioritise getting vaccine to poor people in poor countries. We're so used to stories of people in particular settings trying to get benefits just for their own citizens. And here we've got a company as well as a country, because Britain's been a very, very strong backer of this effort, actually saying we want the world to benefit and the scientists all coming together as well. It's great news. Is the WHO just a little bit more comfortable now that uh, there's been a significant changing of the guard in Washington? Well, we never really, John, felt that the American people and American institutions like universities and research centres or American hospitals and public health doctors were somehow saying WHO is, is all wrong. There are hundreds of thousands of Americans who we've worked with over the decades with whom we've got and had remarkable relationships. And we want to continue these relationships. And we feel that it's really unfortunate that our capacity to network, to share ideas, to trust each other, to test out theories and hypotheses, that that's been really made very difficult by the position of a small group of people who have an awful lot of power. So assuming that the transfer takes place as anticipated, it will be very good to maintain the relationship with the American people and American scientists, not least because that's what the world needs. David Namaro, thank you very much indeed for talking with us. Thank you.